Hey, how's it going everybody? Robin here with Aries Fire Tarot. Uh, so welcome to my channel guys and welcome to your daily tarot card reading for Thursday, December 3rd. And I will be using the Witch's Tarot deck to, to do this reading for you. And who saw my reading yesterday? I just want to know because I dropped the Tattoo Tarot twice during the course of that reading. So, and it was pretty bad. But then at the end of the reading and I write down the name of the video in my little book that I have here so I know what to call your video. Um, I just absolutely scattered the entire deck all over everywhere. It just like scattered and I was like uh, at least I had stopped recording at that point because it just was so embarrassing already but I did drop it a total of three times so I guess that's done with and we can just hopefully go for a blooper free reading this time but I think I've said this before if you guys met me in real life you probably wouldn't even know how I got through the day I'm so clumsy such a butterfingers um anyway so at least I find this kind of thing really funny and I don't embarrass easy anymore like I used to but um all right so I'm gonna look at you know sort of the highest energy available for you guys this reading is for all zodiac signs so let me just do a quick deck cut here oh and i was thinking no whammies no whammies no whammies so we do have the queen of wands right away with this card you can see that this queen of wands she's actually relaxed a little bit so the 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 thing that i got right away for you guys is to sit back take a little bit of a break um, don't get so involved with other people's drama. The Queen of Wands, she can really, really burn herself out by being too interested and too involved in other people's lives. Uh, for many of you, you could have, you know, children getting a little bit older, you know, where you don't have to be so involved with their day-to-day -day lives. I'm seeing there's a little bit of a separation that's needed. Um, you could be just a little bit too involved in somebody's life. It could be your friend or, you know, and that, that could be from boredom or loneliness, but it, it feels like there's a little bit of a coming on too strong, being a little bit too much of a helicopter mom or dad or, you know, um, so sit back and just relax a little bit. You know, people are going to be okay. And this is coming from a place of love for you guys. So, you know, but imagine someone doing that to you, you know, uh, sort of, are you sure everything's okay? You know, you don't have to do that. People are adults probably at this point in your life. And all you have to do is, is let people know that you're here to help them. You don't have to constantly check up on people. Um, so that's, that's a really cool vibe for you. And it should give you a little bit of a sense of relief. Um, even if it's very difficult to separate yourself, especially for those of you that have, have newly uh, become empty nesters. I remember what that was like for me. Like, um, why doesn't Robin cry again on YouTube? So anyway, and I wrote a, I wrote a piece about it for Cockroach Zine. And it was awful, you know, I would, I would come down the stairs in my house where I used to live with my family and both my boys rooms were right there. I could see it right to the left. And I remember that one morning after, um, and they were both gone, you know, not at the same time, but, and, and just looking in both those bedrooms and they were gone. So it was very difficult and I have to really restrain myself from super texting them. Hey, is everything okay? Because like I, I bit of a helicopter mom, but anyway, you can let things, oh guys, you can let things take their course. You know, you can trust that you did a really good job as a parent or as a friend or, you know, in whatever sort of mentoring role that you have provided for somebody I'm seeing that you guys could have possibly, and it depends on who you are as an individual watching this, um, you know, provided counsel for somebody that was going for a very difficult time or, um, you know, maybe some sort of addictions counseling or whatever, but because there's such a feeling of nostalgia here with the Six of Cups and you can see the children here. And I, I think this is more applicable to people that, you know, your your children have 
grown up and moved out and maybe you're just having this really especially during lockdowns and you're you know basically in your own head like if you still have a job to go to I mean at least you can stay a little bit busy but I know that there's a lot of people that have lost their jobs and we just went into a really strict lockdown lockdown again where I live um so feelings of nostalgia really wrapped up into this caregiver mode so it can give you these urges to sort of check on people um i'm gonna mention this because i don't know did you guys just hear my nose whistle oh my god okay let's try not to do that again i'm really sorry it gets so dry here it's so cold and then with the furnace going ugh. but anyway so yeah, it could be a tough day or a tough week for you. Just really like looking back and saying, oh, I remember when things were so, you know, my family was closer or they lived at home or like I really missed doing that job or, you know, so kind of try to hold yourself back a little bit. People are doing fine without you because that's what you gave them. You gave them that really strong foundation and you want your kids to be independent. You want the people that you coach through uh, very difficult and challenging situations. You want them to be able to stand on their own two feet. That's what you put all those years and all of your heart into doing was that, you know, so people could be like free and independent. But there, there's a definite nostalgia here, the Six of Cups. And combined with that, that sort of, protective parental like caregiver card that I'm seeing here but I mean you did such a good job you know and and you've given people their wings you really have you've got the king of pentacles here and that's the best feeling is of all so that's something you know it, it's gonna take a little while to sort of cycle out of that one-on-one -on -one front row seat you know it's not easy it, it's gonna take you a little bit of time but it'll it'll really evolve into something very rich and beautiful for you and you know you don't know what's going to happen in the future and people are always going to need you it's just going to be in a different way but i feel like there's a bit of a like an echoey the king of pentacles though he's like yeah i, I did a good job i really you know he's really proud of himself he's like wow i'm just I'm so pleased with how things turned out. So if you have a little bit of a melancholy on the side, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, so here it is. You've got the Eight of Cups here, you guys. It's like, well, that re went really well, but you could really feel today, especially more than ever, lonely. And just looking back on different times where, you know, it, it is very challenging to see things in a different way, you know, and you could have, you know, your roommate could have moved out, you could be living alone for the first time. This is just whatever spectrum where your life has changed, where you don't have that kind of close contact with people the way that you used to. And it, it's going to take a little bit of time and you know, it's okay to miss people and it's okay to miss people that were not good for you either. And some of you could really be missing a person that has, you know, released themselves to the other side of the veil and you could be really, you know, I wish things were the way that they were. So I'm, I'm really seeing sort of a, a walk down memory lane here for you guys that you know, you might cry. You really could. You You, you might just feel really lonely you know I feel really uh, nostalgic and separated and that's okay oh so we have the three of swords here oh jeez, don't cry so this is very painful like and it's okay to acknowledge that that you know and honestly when my house was empty after both my boys moved out I laid down on the floor in the hallway and cried my eyes out and nobody ever knew about it until now 
<laughs> but I survived and you guys will too. And it's okay to have this gut-wrenching melancholy and miss people because that's the most important thing is to have that feeling. And when you miss somebody so much that it makes you want to cry, that's when the, you know that you've truly loved. I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.